Welcome back to Circuit Sphere. Today we're diving into another video in my Power Mac G5 series where we take an in-depth look at one of Apple's most powerful and complex machines, the quad-core Power Mac G5. If you haven't seen the previous videos in this series, I'll have them linked in the description below so you can check them out. This powerhouse was the last of the PowerPC-based Macs before Apple made the jump to Intel. And in this episode, we're going to completely tear it down piece by piece. If you're a fan of vintage Apple hardware or just love seeing a meticulous teardown, you're in the right place. Let's get started. All right, let's dive into this Power Mac G5 teardown. First things first, remove the aluminum side door and take off the plastic airflow cover. Once that's out of the way, gently lay the Power Mac G5 on its side and we're now ready to get started. Before you begin, make sure you have a way to keep track of your screws. I like using small plastic Ziploc bags labeled with a Sharpie to keep everything organized. I always start with the easy stuff. So the first thing I did was remove the hard drives. Just lift up on them gently and they slide right out. Next, I moved on to the DVD drive. There are two clips you need to fold out, allowing you to slide the drive out. But before pulling it all the way out, reach behind it and disconnect the IDE and power cables. Once the DVD drive is out, pull up on the front inlet fan. It'll come out easily. With that removed, you'll see the eight RAM slots. Go ahead and take out the RAM sticks and set them aside. Now, remove the G5 cover that's hiding the water cooling system and the processor. Just slide it to the left and it'll come right off. Now back to the middle section. Let's start by removing the speaker. The speaker and the attached fan are connected to the logic board, so be sure to connect the two cables before pulling it out. Once those are unplugged, the speaker and fan assembly should slide right out. Next, unclip the inlet frame from the radiator and set it aside. Now let's move up to the graphics card. There's just one screw holding it in place. Once that's removed, gently lift up on the retention tab at the back of the card while pulling it out. These tabs get brittle with age, so be careful. That said, from my experience, even if it breaks, everything will still work fine, and I've broken a lot of them. Next, locate the processor support bar cable and remove it from the clip on the bottom side of the PCI divider. Then pull it up and disconnect it from the processor cable. To take out the water cooling system and processors, you'll need a set of six inch long hex drivers. I'll link the exact set I used in the description, along with all the other tools I used in this teardown. This set of hex tools will also work for the 2006 to 2012 Mac Pro cheese grater models. Start by removing one screw from the top, one from the bottom, and the two screws securing the bracket on top of the water cooling system. Once that bracket is off, Remove the six long processor mounting screws, four on the right and two on the left. Now's a perfect time to remove the rear fan. There are two plastic clips holding it to the rear of the computer. Just push down on the tab and pull the fan inward. Make sure to disconnect the fan cable from the middle section of the Power Mac and feed the cable through to the bottom before pulling the fan all the way out. Then take out four short screws that mount the two processor terminal assemblies. All of them are on the right side.
Finally, remove the four screws on the right side of the radiator. Now you can gently grab the center handle and pull the entire assembly straight up and out of the power mat. Next, take out the processor support bar and cable. There are two screws holding it in place, one at the top and one at the bottom. Once those are removed, lift the support bar and cable out of the machine. Now, let's move to the front panel board, which houses the power button, one USB 2.0 port, and a Firewire 400 port. First, disconnect the power button cable then remove the two screws securing the board. Once those are out, slide the board to the right while lifting up and it should come right out. Back to the middle PCI section. The PCI card guide is held in place by two screws, one at the top right and one at the bottom left. For the PCI divider, Remove the three black mounting screws, two on the left and one on the right. Once those are out, you can pull the PCI divider free. Now, we're ready to tackle the logic port. Start by disconnecting the eight cables, six at the top and two at the bottom. Then remove the nine bus bar screws that attach the power supply to the logic board at the bottom. Next, take out the six logic board standoffs. You're supposed to use a 932 inch nut driver, but I didn't have one. So I just ended up using a small pair of pliers and that worked fine. After that, remove the three black mounting screws, two on the right and one on the bottom left. Before lifting the logic board out, make sure the power supply cables are out of the way. I found it easiest to remove the metal fan cover on the back of the power Mac and push some of the cables through those two holes. Then slide the board to the left and lift it up gently to remove it. Last but not least, let's remove the 1000 watt power supply. Start by taking out the two screws securing the power supply's top cover. Then remove the cover itself. Next, take out the four screws at the bottom of the case holding the power supply in place. Finally, remove the last mushroom head standoff closest to the power supply. Again, I used my small pliers for this. To get the power supply out, slide it toward the front, then lift it out from the bottom. And that's it. The Power Mac G5 is now fully disassembled. This teardown is part of my ongoing Power Mac G5 series. So if you want to see more, check out the other videos linked in the description below. This was an incredibly intricate machine and Apple really packed some serious engineering into it. If you found this teardown helpful, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to Circuit Sphere for more deep dives into vintage Apple hardware, and drop a comment below if you have any questions or thoughts. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.